everybody, welcome to my video. This is the intro to the intro. We have a little bit of business that we have to handle before we can go through with the rest of the show. Earlier today, I posted a short and the very first comment was a snarky ass bitch made comment. Look dude, there's a lot of shit about me to make fun of. There is a shitload of material there. And you decided to make fun of my tattoos. This fucking mop literally said this to me. Did y'all read that? It's not there right now. I'm gonna put it in and post. And I have spent a lot of money on all of this. I mean, the fucking tattoos? You're not gonna say nothing about these weird ass fucking nipples? Those freak me out. We could have made fun of them together, but my tattoos? You fucking scoundrel. I'm just playing. It's all love, you stupid cockbiter. Anyway, enough of my bullshit, because tonight we're gonna talk about what happens in prison if they put a fucking pedophile in your cell. It doesn't have to be just a straight pedophile, it could be any type of sex offender, it's all the same shit in there. I mean, don't get me wrong, if you had a three-man cell and they put a rapist of full-grown people over here and a rapist of children over here, you're definitely gonna have to prioritize. The pedo is going before the regular rapist, but you're gonna fucking kill both of them, right? When you are locked up, there is a specific fucking etiquette that you have have to follow with situations like these. You do not have a fucking choice. If you don't handle business, you are no good just like they are. You don't want to end up on that fucking naughty list, boys and girls, trust me. And look, if you've seen any of my videos before, you already know where the fuck I stand on this shit. I'm offended that they get oxygen at all whatsoever, but I'm definitely not gonna share air with these fucking rapist motherfuckers. We already know that about me. What we're gonna talk about tonight is about a dude who wasn't about that fight life, and he got stuck in there with one of these fucking baby rapers, and he did not wanna handle his business, and how the fuck that turned out. What you have to understand is that there are fucking rules for convicts and inmates in prison, and these are not polite suggestions. We are not asking that you conduct yourself in a certain way, shape, or form. We are telling you this is what the fuck you do, and if you don't fucking do it, there are goddamn consequences. And it's not like going to felony court where you might fucking get probation. You're gonna get fucked up all the way. And when it comes to getting celled up with a rat, a rapist, a pedophile, if you don't handle that fucking shit, you are considered a sympathizer, and sympathizers get the same exact fucking treatment. I've seen dudes come in on their fourth or fifth DUI and they were all right man they were considered good dudes until it was time to fucking handle shit and they didn't handle shit and then they were just as bad as any fucking baby rapist it's a zero tolerance type of fucking situation and listen, I'm not trying to glamorize violence. I'm not trying to say that violence is always the answer. Like, I'm an old ass man now and I'm not like looking for reasons to go fuck people up. But pedophiles and rapists are an inherent reason to fuck someone up. And if you have like a moral objection, like if you were a pacifist, I respect that on the streets. In prison, nobody's gonna respect that. I would recommend not doing fucking crimes if you won't put your fucking hands up and start swinging. You ain't gotta win, bitch, but you gotta stand the fuck up. So, uh, drum roll, please. Brrr, let's fucking go! Look, so you have to realize that I didn't write this fucking book, man. I'm not the author. These rules were in play long before I ever got to prison, and they're gonna be in play probably after I'm feeding fucking trees, y'all. Some of these prison rules I didn't fucking like. I still don't fucking like. But some of them make absolute sense to me. And this whole not fucking selling up with a fucking chomo or a fucking sex offender, I absolutely am 100% with that fucking business, man. They deserve no fucking quarter, no safety, nowhere to lay their motherfucking head and get a good Good nights ass sleep they should never feel safe their victims were robbed of their sense of safety and security so they should never live a second the rest of their life feeling like they're in a good place and the same people that enforce these fucking rules, they will come and let you know if you're gonna be held in violation most of the time. Like, if you're new to the fucking joint and you're fucking up, they're gonna come and be like, hey man, you might not wanna be doing that shit. Here's what's gonna happen, here's why. Like, you can't do it. It's no good, bro. But this one dude, he was a fucking lawyer and he had gotten hemmed up. I believe the story was that he was taking like narcotics as payment and shit like that. And then he was selling to other people. Well, one of those people fucking ratted him out, did a controlled buy and he was in there on like a fucking sales of fucking cocaine. As prison standards go, that's a solid fucking beef. We got no problem with you. You're straight, man. We'll leave you the fuck alone. But he must have pissed someone in the prison administration off because they sold him up first off with a fucking freak, man. 
stone cold fucking diddler. And some dudes approached him at lunch, man, down in the chow hall. They told him straight up, like, you cannot be living with this fucking dude. You got decent charges. You seem like an all right cat. We're just letting you know right now, like, you got to get him the fuck out of your cell. Kick him the fuck out. Beat his fucking ass. Pack his fucking shit and send him down the fucking tier. Well, this fucking lawyer was an arrogant piece of shit. He told him, you're not going to fucking bully me. I'm not going to be fucking told what to do. Do you know who I am? Bitch, it doesn't matter. You're just a fucking inmate now. But they laid it out for him. They fucking told him what he needed to do and what the consequences were going to be. They told him, man, if you don't get that fucking dude out of that fucking cell, we're coming for both of you. Well, this was at fucking lunch, and the dude didn't fucking listen. He went back in his cell with the fucking dude, closed the fucking cell door, so when they popped those doors for dinner, he had three dudes run up in that fucking cell with fucking shanks. They stuck both them motherfuckers. They bootmoshed the shit out of both them bitches. They left a fucking bloodbath in that fucking cell. And that fucking arrogant motherfucker that said, you don't know who I am, he was begging, bro. Literally fucking, we heard him all the way down the tier, begging to be let go. At one point, he tried to crawl out of the cell and they dragged him back in by his fucking feet. On God, it was the funniest shit I had seen all week. And these dudes were pretty nice guys. Before they fucking left that cell, they let both these dudes know exactly what to say. They prepped these motherfuckers like they were going to be auditioning for a Hollywood film. So when the fucking CEOs found that fucking bloody mess in that fucking cell, they told the CEOs that they had both gotten into a mutual combat. They both got wrapped up, went and did four months in the hole each, came out, and they let dude slide after that shit because he had gotten fucking violated and he got served the fuck up. The Chimo, though, that dude's got it for the rest of his fucking natural life in there. So quick bonus story, man. There was this dude that I really fucking liked. He was lame. He was scared. He wasn't really about shit, but he was on good charges and he had a good heart. So I tried to look out for this dude as much as I possibly could. Well, one day his cell, he got shipped out and they put a sex offender in his cell. He came down to Chow and he said, JD, I don't know what to do. They just put a sex offender in my fucking cell. I said, you got to beat his fucking ass. He said, man, I'm scared. I can't fight. I'm not going to be able to take this dude. I said, you got to fucking try. And this dude begged me for help. So I did exactly what I should have done and I helped him. I got up, I walked over to his fucking new celly, I sat down at that fucking table and I told him, look man, when you get back up to that fucking cell, you're gonna pack your fucking shit because if you're not fucking out of that fucking cell, you're gonna get your shit stomped the fuck out. I went back to my table to the homeboy and I told him straight up, man, I said, look man, if you don't go in there and fucking handle that fucking dude, I'm handling you when those fucking doors open up. Instead of fighting him, you're gonna fight me and you'd rather fight him, I promise you. So he went back to the cell when the dude came back in he immediately sucker punched the shit out of the motherfucker he got him on the ground he got two or three good licks in he kind of got some shots back he got fucked up a little bit but he saved face and everybody respected him from there on out yes it sucked yes it was a little bit harsh but that's what you gotta do man you cannot let anyone lose respect for you you have to maintain that shit by the way that you conduct yourself in there and prison wasn't meant for no soft motherfucker bro if you need a little motivation to step the fuck up I'm here to help you, baby boy. I watched that dude the rest of the time that he was in prison. He paroled when I was still sitting there, and he didn't have to do another fight the whole time. He only got off on that one guy that one time, but he maintained his respect, and his confidence level was so much higher after that. I felt like I watched a child blossom into a man. <laughs> anyway, y'all, I fucking love y'all. Thank you for fucking sitting through this one with me, man. If you want to drop a like, a subscribe, a comment, a video suggestion, y'all know what time it is, man. I I appreciate y'all. One love. Be good or be good at it. You sold me out. Did I let you down?